it's time to bring some civility uh, back into the political discourse of Idaho. And I'm confident that one of the ways to do that is to pass this initiative. Now, there's nothing more sacred in our system of government than the right to vote. And the right to vote unharassed by anybody. And I know in my 25 elections, uh, and all of the 36 years that I served in public office, uh, most of that was pretty cordial. In fact, it, it wasn't really until the early 2000, I would say 2007 or 2008, that I saw this nastiness uh, come in. And, you know, the way a person's campaign uh, and the way they campaign is uh, the way they're going to govern. And if they're going to govern by being on the opposite side of whatever issue there is, uh, then they're not going to govern well. And so what I see today is a lot of people that are running for office, unfortunately most of them on our side, on the Republican side, that haven't got the skill to convince people to be on their side. So the only thing they can do is tear them down personally. The only thing they can do is argue with them. And so I'm proud to be part of this. I, uh, uh, like I said, a, a lot of the folks that Jim has on that list, uh, you'll see before their name, former. Well, they were former people that served when politics was cordial, when the campaigns were not divisive like they are now. And so I want to bring that all back to Idaho. Idaho deserves better. And Idaho also deserves all the choices that this initiative will give them. I will confess that for the last uh, 20 years, I have been an independent, but I am really committed, along with my friend Bruce Newcomb, who served as Speaker of the House for many years, to getting civility, common sense, and dignity back into the party that I grew up in, the Republican Party. Uh, this last year, Bruce and I and, and a number of other Republicans, Ben Yasursa, worked on Take Back Idaho. We became involved in a number of the uh, primary races. <clears throat> we will do that again next year. And that will help. But nothing will get the Republican Party and the state back to the situation where people were reasonable, pragmatic, and civil in public discourse, like the initiative that is going to be on the ballot. And I guarantee you, it will be up for a vote in 2024. I would say that there's many people in this building and across the state that have been put into office and supported in office because of the very groups that this party is now choosing to exclude uh, and not have a voice at the table. And that's your, um, the state Republican committee votes that the Republican women no longer have a vote. Those are the women that stuff envelopes. They wear the red jackets. They pound on doors, they canvass neighborhoods. They are the Republican Party. And to me, that is just a travesty of epic proportions. Don't get me started about it. It's a step in the wrong direction. Because as you know, women, you know, we're the largest voting block. We're the largest section of the economy. We do the buying, we do the housekeeping, we do the raising. We are the backbone of Idaho. Those red jackets, those Republican red jackets that this Central Party Committee decided was not worthy to have a receipt to seat at the table is because they are Republicans who are moderate. They are Republicans who are sensible. They are Republicans who think about what's best for the next generation, not for the person sitting in power. They understand that the power of this state comes from people who do not seek power, but people who are willing to step into power in order to do greater good for the people of the state, not for themselves. The person that should have the power is the person that wants it the least. And the Republican Party State Central Committee has proven that the only reason that they are in business is to further themselves. 
and to put themselves in a position of power in this state and this Republican Party. The young Republicans of this state should be paying attention to what's happening at our state level leadership because your voice is being subverted by their voice. All of the formers that we were, you know, nobody knows who we are because we're the old guard. We are the reason people are moving to this state. We built this state. The principles of the Republican Party 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, are the reason people are coming in droves to Idaho. And my message to the new Republicans in Idaho is you better start paying attention to what's happening at your Republican Party. Because what got you here is very important to preserve. The reason you came to Idaho is so important to preserve. And if you don't pay attention to what's happening to this party, this party is going to lose its power of everything that the Republican Party stands for. And so shame on the Republican Party for taking that voice away at the Republican Party Central Committee of the Republican women and the uh, young Republicans. Shame on them. Shame on Dorothy Moon. They need to know that people are paying attention. And this primary is so important, so important to bring Idaho and that big tent back together under the Republican Party to where everybody feels welcomed in the party and people don't feel marginalized for disagreeing for, with somebody for 20% of the time. I don't know that they thought about this when they opposed the, the closed primary back in 2008. But one of the things that happens is, I think it's over a quarter million voters are either uh, unaffiliated or they're registered as independent. Nationally, about half of those are veterans. And I'm guessing the same is here in Idaho. It, it, I'm guessing it's about the same percentage in Idaho. So there's a large percentage of veterans that are registered that way or are unaffiliated. And so, with a closed primary, that excludes those veterans. You should never have an election where veterans are excluded. Veterans put their, put the nation ahead of their families and their own lives. You know, we stood up to protect liberty. We don't just give it lip service. Our lives are put at risk to protect freedom around the world for everybody, not just political parties. So doggone it, there shouldn't be any election that because we're veterans, we, we have earned the right to vote in any damned election we choose.